This video is going to explain how to make a good poster for a design project. So a design project is different than a science project, or like if you were going to do a poster for a science fair, then you would have um, experimental methods and you would be following a specific procedure and there are, you would be making more of a discovery instead of producing an invention. So design project is for if you made an invention and then you built it and you tested it and you're showing it off. So um, basically we want to start out with this format. So kind of you want to devote about um, one third to the problem and two thirds to the solution. So basically the left column here is the problem. So it shows like the objective, the design criteria and the rest of it is solution. And of course a banner at the top with your title. Now, as far as font goes, um, it's important since people are going to be reading a poster from a distance, any major text, like um, any of the small text, is going to be in a sans serif font. So sans serif font here um, is like Arial or Calibri or Aptos or something that doesn't have little tails on it. So tails are the serifs. So then um, if you do want to use a fancier font, then something like the project title or section headers could be in like Rockwell or Times New Roman or Impact or any anything that's a little bit bolder and fancier you can use for a title. So now um, let's zoom in on this and talk about each of the different sections. So when you're designing your poster, you want to include relevant content, logical flow, lots of pictures, minimal text. So people are gonna be looking at this from a distance. And to be honest, even though you probably did lots of cool calculations and wrote a huge report, that is not stuff that most people wanna read. So what you want to do is show your project as appealingly as you can in a visual format. It's almost like making a flyer for your project. Um, you want to be attractive. So, um, Make sure that it's organized. So double check all of your spellings. Um, make sure that, you know, boxes are lined up. If you have rounded corners, make sure that the radius of all of the corners is the same size. Um, and, you know, that things are centered and just basic stuff like that to make it appealing to look at. Um, use a good color scheme, you know. Um, something like red and yellow is going to look like McDonald's or red and green is going to look like Christmas or black and orange is Halloween. So like choose choose colors that more complement each other and are not super bold or have extremely um, like extremely busy patterns on them. OK, so going section by section, um, the objective should explain the problem statement of your project or like what is the goal of your project? What issue are you trying to solve? Why are you making this invention? What invention do you even want to make? That goes in objective. And all you need here is one to two sentences. Um, so then next show a relevant photo of the problem or like the area that you're trying to solve. Just any kind of um, like little visual aid that breaks up the text but is relevant to the project. So then the design criteria. Um, so you want to list out just the main design criteria. So you might have gotten, you know, two dozen design criteria for your project, whatever your teacher told you to make. Um, or maybe um, you followed tons and tons of AS team standards or anything like that. Um, you don't need to list everything out, but just the main things. So whatever is the most important, and then use parallel bullet structure. So that means starting each bullet with the same part of speech. And the bullets are in order to minimize the use of text. So you don't want to type out an entire sentence. So you wouldn't start out with the project must have and then have that at the beginning of every bullet. Just delete that. People know that's what the project must have. Just start out with um, the, the main things that it must do, like maybe fit within whatever the dimensions are, or weigh less than 10 kilograms, or um, be able to track position and velocity, or just whatever the actual criteria are. So then moving on to product features. So this might be a prototype, 
Um, or it could be more of a product or, you know, whatever it is, if it's your first build of it, it's definitely a prototype. So make that prototype features um, just to sort of set the expectation. Uh, if this is something that you've been working on for like an entire semester or maybe more than a semester, then you want to call it a product. Okay, so highlight any important features of it using bullets or call outs. So you can start with a, like a big, nice photo or a CAD assembly or an exploded view, whatever gives a good big picture view of your prototype. And if you're taking a photo, make sure it has a clean background. So maybe set your product on a sheet or stand it in front of a clean wall or something like that. So there's not a lot of um, junk or like, you know, wires or screws or whatever. The area that you've been working in the workshop is probably not the ideal environment for photography. So then include arrows and labels that indicate important features of it. So maybe there are specific parts that you want to highlight. So maybe you designed an entire system and you want to indicate the individual subsystems. Or maybe you just have one machine, but it has significant components to it. Um, not everyone is going to know what your project is the first time they look at it, especially if they're not an engineer. So you want to make it easy for them to identify what the highlights are. Make sure also that your text is of a readable size to, for people to see from a distance. So probably for the body text of your poster, you want to stick to like size 60 or so. And then for the titles or the headings, you want to be at least a 75. Anything smaller than that is going to be harder to read from a distance. And if you have extra space um, after having the picture of your prototype, then you could include additional images um, that help with seeing it. So maybe something like a wiring diagram or a pneumatic diagram or your user interface, if you made a GUI or something, um, or your controls, or if you have a timeline of previous prototypes, like maybe this wasn't your first one, but you went through a lot of revisions, you could even show something like that. Anything to give people a good picture of the whole designed system. So then finally, the test results. So just building something isn't enough. Obviously, you need to show that it works. So although your prototype looks extremely beautiful, you have to prove that, or even if it's not beautiful, you have to prove that it's worth it. So Put your test results, and the best way to show this is like in a table or a graph or some kind of pretty easy to follow format. Um, so you can also compare yours to other like existing competing products or other people in the class if they were building the same thing that you did. Uh, try to highlight where the successes of your project are. You know, like, is it fast? Is it accurate? Is it under budget? Um, anything you can do to make yours look good. And then make sure that you've tested it enough times to have some statistical power of your results. So be able to get an average and calculate a standard deviation. You know, test it at least 10 times doing something, not just like one time for, in a work for the video and that was it. And then end with a concluding sentence that just sort of highlights the success. Um, or if it, I mean, if it was a complete failure, you could put that, but hopefully um, it's not so that you can still graduate. And then additional things you could put there are references. If there are any major sources that you cited or got code from or followed instructables or got ideas from anywhere. If you had a company sponsor or a donor that bought a lot of stuff for your project. If you had any um, mentors that were really invested, you could list them there. Or if you used any human subjects in your testing, you could thank them for that too. Um, and then if you have a video of your project or a website for it or a social media platform where you've been posting things to help people follow your journey, you can link that as a QR code so that anybody else who comes by can just scan that code. And if they don't have time to talk to you, they can at least see a video of your project. So you want to make this as appealing as possible so that you get you know, job opportunities, you never know who is coming. So make your poster impressive. And if you want to know how to give an impressive speech, then watch the next video coming up.